Chapter 10 Sue waited up for me. Sometimes she does that, and it almost always knocks me out. Sometimes I say to her, Susie, you shouldn't. And then she comes back at me, Sam, shut up. So I know she's been worried, which knocks me out too. I hit the corner and saw she was waiting, pacing the window that faces the street. Harry, the owner, had loaded it up with some catnip, Santas, and Christmassy lights, but she lighted that window like nobody's business. A green-eyed redhead with me on her mind. Wilmer, the G-man, had left for the night. As soon as I popped through Caboodle's mail slot, Sue was all over me. Sammy, you're wet and you're catching pneumonia. Come back to the couch. I followed her silently, passing the sinks and the beauty shop mirrors and racks full of toys, and then into the parlor, as Sue likes to call it. The little back room with the pink quilted sofa, the microwave oven, the desk, and the phone. The sofa is plastic, so Sue doesn't mind when I drip all over it. Here, put this on. She tossed me a towel that she'd warmed on the heater. I ducked underneath it, inhaling its heat and the warm smell of downy. She said, Did you eat? I believe I did once, I recalled. In my youth. Why, you poor little orphan, she said. Can I fix you a nice bowl of porridge? She flashed me some locks. It was Bridget's deposit, I gathered, still in its little baggie and nesting on ice from a leftover Pepsi. How is she? I said. You mean Bridget? She's sleeping. I glanced at the doorway that leads to the guest rooms and lowered my voice. So, what do you think of her? Well, for a person who's totally gorgeous, I guess she's okay. She was moving the locks to a clean paper towel. She's in desperate trouble, of course, but still, if you get past the trouble, she's basically good. Would you care for some capers? I shook my head no. But where do you get the capers? From Bridget, of course. She said it was caviar, Sam. It was capers. I laughed sarcastically. Yeah, she is good. Sue didn't answer. She toted the locks to the arm of the sofa and said to me, Eat. We both started eating. The locks was superb. It was meltingly silky and pleasantly fat, and we gobbled it silently. Locks doesn't lie. Sue licked her whiskers. Now tell me, she said. I want to know everything. Start from the top. I told her everything. One of those stories that goes on forever and doesn't make sense. But it sounds so hopeless, she said, when I had finished. It can't be hopeless. It's chapter ten. There has to be more to it. More like what? More to the story. Maybe the story's in why they're all after him. Why he's so hot. If I figured out why, I could figure out who. You mean, who's got the kitten? Or who'll get him next? For a wee little button, the kid gets around. I scratched my whiskers and stared at the wall. For a time, we were silent. What? She said. Nothing, I guess I was thinking. I know you were thinking, she said. Thinking what? That Bridget's a liar and Jean-Claude's a twerp and it's making me crazy. She gave it some thought. So you mean he's not lying? Except by omission. He's just not saying what needs to be said. But the lady is a liar. She said so herself. She's not lying all the time, Sammy. I mean, she lives with O'Shaughnessy. That much is true. 
and she didn't imagine the Beaumont Gallery, and then there's the kitten, who's certainly black, and the purple carrier, just like she said. You know, like you found in Sebastian's office? I angled my head at her. So, what's your point? Well, it's just like the locks and the caviar, Sammy. Like, half what she says could be perfectly true. I looked at her levelly. Right. Which half? She thought for a second, and nodded. Oh, so it's still like a guessing game, isn't it? Yep. So what are you guessing? I rolled to my back and then stared at the ceiling. I stared for a while. I'm guessing, I said, that he's Fifi's kitten. I'm guessing, I said, he was born on the farm and then stayed with his mom till he learned a few manners and somebody suddenly brought him to town. You think Bridget's roommate? I have no idea. But it doesn't strike me that Mr. O'Shaughnessy needed a kitten right now in his life. You mean getting evicted and all. Okay, so what if he found little fluff on the street? Like the way Bridget told you. And then what? I said. Do you think he just happened to call Mr. Beaumont? I didn't see posters around on the street that said, Kitten missing, give us a call. So it's got to be deeper. And please, I beg you, Sue, if you love me, don't ask me what. Who said that I loved you? I have no idea. Who said that I loved you? I've no idea. I grinned at her wickedly. Sue did a glare. So then it's Sebastian, she said. He picked up the kitten in Wiggum and brought him to town. And why do you think so? Well, we know he was up in Wiggum and had a car on account of that ticket you found in his pocket. Then how does O'Shaughnessy enter the plot? Oh, Sam, I don't know, she snapped. I don't know. I mean, anything's possible. Bingo, I said. So you're wasting your time if you're making up stories. Besides, how he got here is only the start, because now you've got mystery people like Patter and... Hold it a second. I leapt to the phone. You mind if I use this? Why would I mind? It's not like I pay for it. Right, that's a point. I stepped on the speaker and punched out a call to the neighborhood precinct, a personal line. A fellow I know there, a cat named Gomez, is on to the trick of a personal phone. He uses a cell phone that's stashed in the closet where stuff from the criminals goes when they're caught, and it works pretty nicely. The calls are private, they're uninterrupted, and criminals pay. He answered it promptly. 7th Precinct, Officer Gomez. Buddy, it's Sam. Can you do me a favor? I ever say no? How you doing there, Sammy? Lousy. I said. How's life at the precinct? Busy, he said. I keep opening the closet and stashing more stuff. Like I can't get a nap in. You better talk fast. Can you do me a search on a Peter Patter? Sounds like an alias. Looks like a creep. Call him a burglar who works with a dart gun. Blonde, about 30. Consider it done. I'll get on the computer when Rafferty's off and get back to you, Sammy. I hung up the phone. Okay, where was I? The mystery people. You don't know a thing about mittens and G. Did I actually say that? No, but you thought it. Come here for a back rub. I jumped at the chance. I moved the pillow, and Sue started carefully, merrily dancing around on my spine. Boy, you are tense, she said. 
Try relaxing. I tried relaxing. Continue, she said. I continued relaxing and started to yawn. Hey, I meant talking. Continue talking. Mmm, I said, yawning, and tumbled to sleep. <laughs>